All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the special events team meeting on this delightfully rainy day. Um, a couple of reminders before we start. We'll start with just introductions of the team. We'll go around the table. Um, we have three events to get through today. So just ask folks, event organizers, to be pretty um, organized in your presentations, and then we'll ask you questions, and it should be painless for everyone. Uh, it is a public meeting and we're live streaming, so mind your P's and Q's. Don't say anything you wouldn't want your grandmother to hear you say. Um, and just remember that um, we're here to make sure that we have really great events and really safe events for our community. We are all have, I think, the same goals, so we'll move forward. Um, my name is Maria Wig with the Office of Community, Community Engagement here at the City of Boise, and I think we'll start with ACHD to my right. John Wasson, Ada County Highway District. Debbie White, Ada County Highway District. Ed Graves, Public Works. Conrad McDaniel, Republic Services. Vince Vergara, City of Boise Parking. Ray Geismerick, Valley Regional Transit. Sydney, Sydney Murphy, City Risk Management. Andre Womack, Downtown Boise Association. Jesse Tappert, Boise Fire Department. Cameo Aiken, State County Paramedics. Jeff Nia, Boise Police. Matthew Convalinka, Boise Police. Taylor Atman, Boise Police. Daniel Foster, State of Idaho. Steve Walker, State of Idaho. Kelly Frank, City Clerk's Office. Do we have anyone online? Nope. Perfect. Um, and also a good reminder to uh, use mics. It's the only way the system can pick up the sound in this. So welcome, Joseph Boise Pride. You are up. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, nice to see everybody again. And uh, I'd just like to say, um, since we are in a public forum, um, you know, want to express my thanks to the committee that sits in front of us. Um, I don't think the public realizes how much you guys actually do for the city of Boise. Um, and in addition to the regular jobs that you hold for your respective departments. So uh, thank you for all that you do. Um, you guys are great partners to work with. Um, this is my fourth, fifth year back in front of the team. So I know a lot of you really well. And um, again, appreciate everything that you do. So I'll start off in that regards. Um, really quickly, we'll run through and hopefully get some good dialogue and get everybody going on their day today. So thanks for your time this morning. Uh, this is going to be the 33rd uh, Boise Pride Festival. My name is Joseph Kibbe. I'm the Vice President of Boise Pride Festival. Uh, I've held this role for about six years now. Um, updates for 2022 on the next uh, page. I give everybody a hard copy and then we've also got that up on the screen for those as well. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so for 2022, there's really not going to be a lot of difference um, from what you guys saw in 2021. Uh, we're really predicting a, a stable, similar festival to last year, size, footprints, attendance, um, number of vendors. Uh, we continue to um, enjoy reliable leadership from our board of directors here at Boise Pride. Uh, we really strive really hard to continue to partner with our downtown core businesses and everybody that we see in front of us. So um, things that are a little bit new, we continue to get a couple of questions why we moved to September. We want to kind of clarify that for this group and anybody that's listening. Uh, we did a survey and uh, we found that we were missing a lot of the students at um, CWI and Boise State uh, with pride during the month of June. So that's why we've looked at September. First year was out of necessity uh, due to COVID where we had some sliding adjustments, but uh, we have found that the festival sits really well. We know we sit with another large event that same weekend, but I can tell you that this event sliding to its current schedule really makes a large impact for those students of Boise State and CWI that were not pre previously participating with their pr respective student groups. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next slide. Just some images there. Um, one of the things to kind of note on this slide, we are moving the lights. So if you look at the bottom right-hand corner, this is about what the capital is expected to look like this year. Uh, we talked through that yesterday. Uh, so it's going to change up a little bit some of the footprint 
um, that's going to help Jesse with some of his stuff and pedestrians to still allow access to that sidewalk at the top of the Y at Capitol Street. And some of the other fun banners that you guys do with the city of Boise. I'm really excited talking to the Department of Community Engagement about what you guys are going to be doing this year. I don't want to give away all the surprises. So uh, here's the 2022 overview event. Uh, again, we are a three day festival, uh, roughly about two and a half, actually, if you break it down. Uh, but September 9th through 11th, uh, same location again, Cecil D. Andrews Park. Uh, Saturday or Friday is uh, six to 10. No vendors that evening. That's going to be our uh, primary push for the festival. That's our main stage performance, front loading headliner, fireworks that evening, conclusion after fireworks, uh, 11 to 9 on Saturday, and then 11 to 5 on Sunday. Sunday is the conclusion of the festival. We're really good about getting wrapped up and getting those things broken down and make sure that we're returned to a quote unquote pristine stage, as you will. Uh, we've contracted again to make sure that we're uh, streeping the, sweeping the streets for the city of Boise as well. Uh, we'll do the whole perimeters of the park again. And then also for the state, we'll go ahead and have the same contractor uh, blow out after the fireworks and clean up the fallout zone. So. I believe there were no after action events noted on the condition of the perimeter of the park and the park itself after the event last year. And our theme for this year, that's about all that's uh, left on this slide um, is called Pride Everyday Superheroes. We have a lot of LGBTQ plus members in the community that are just out there doing their best every day that they can. And again, kind of coming back to the support of this event, this event really means a lot to more people than you could probably know. And the support that we enjoy from the state and the city and everybody that we sit around here, the, it's immense uh, on the lives you touch. So please know that the work that you do also impacts a lot of people in ways that I can't probably express. On this next slide, uh, this is just a quick overview of the individual festival schedule of events. Um, this will be incorporated into the impact notice that we'll be delivering to um, businesses in the downtown core in the coming weeks. Um, one thing I did want to touch on for DBA and Kelly, as we uh, sign those notices, I'm going to be including a tear off sheet uh, so we can make sure that we're recording people that we're touching. Uh, and uh, making contact with that they are aware of what's going to be happening. Um, I have a sample letter that I'll provide with that when I send over the remaining um, items that are attached to the special events permit. But we do want to be really clear that we're making contact. Those individuals are aware and they'll get a really good idea of what's going to be happening with the festival. So we can record that. There's two specific parties that I want to make sure that were invited to today's meeting. I'm not sure if they're in attendance or if they're watching, but our key bank friends at um, the property management um, and park lane management, as well in the apartment building. I, we talked about that yesterday at our um, security meeting. We realized that those are two really critical pieces right there. And we want to make sure that we're transparent with our traffic control plan and any potential access uh, for their residents or tenants during those days. So I'll go on to the next slide. Um, this is our overview of the festival layout. Um, I will owe a new festival layout. We are making some changes after our after action event and walkthrough uh, yesterday, we're uh, going to be clearing out that bottom right hand corner that's at the intersection of Bannock and Sixth Street. Uh, we've heard those safety concerns loud and clear. We're going to be opening that up all the way to make sure that we have uh, fire engine capabilities to come into the event if we need to. Uh, we're relocating our EMS um, standby services to be closer to our first aid tent. Uh, we talked with Boise Police and we may have some stuff that we may be trying out for them for different security measures we don't know yet. Um, Mr. Tappert and I talked through our firework stuff, so we'll have some adjustments to the measurement to accurately capture fallout zone. Uh, this year, uh, we anticipate not having as much as Bannock on the west side. Uh, COVID testing is not in place. 
However, though, we are still utilizing social distancing measures. Um, all of our vendors will be provided at no cost, all um, necessary sanitizing equipment. We've ensured um, that we still continue to be mindful um, that we still have a high risk in the community and we're doing what we can to mitigate that as well with social distancing cues. That's uh, one of the things that we talked about yesterday, John, uh, was having those food trucks over there. Um, that also gives some of those extra room for not having those food trucks on uh, Bannock to get that fire engine out a little bit better. We feel that that's the responsible way to go and give everybody a little bit more elbow room. Uh, on this next slide, this is our vendors that we're going to be working with. Um, don't anticipate any kind of uh, changes for traffic control. We're using the same vendor as 2021. Uh, not the same person though, sadly, but uh, same company. Uh, EMS um, Standby Services is a new provider, but um, Ada County Paramedics has worked with them before. Uh, security remains uh, stable. Um, we anticipate having the same number of staffing level. We're increasing the number of volunteers that will be uh, trained to help out and roam the park uh, to identify any kind of issues and report those back up appropriately to us. So we had a really successful and quiet festival last year. We anticipate the same going forward this year. Uh, liquor services, um, those are noted on uh, slides for more in depth. Our, our benevolent permit's been pulled. We've applied for our liquor catering uh, for Boise Pride Festival. Our vendor that's running the hospitality area will be uh, doing that shortly if they've not already done that as well. Uh, restroom services for uh, the health department. Uh, we're maintaining and increasing the number of services, but the number of units is going to remain the same from last year. So, uh, waste management services. Um, Conrad, we uh, submitted our request for that. Um, the location of the uh, dumpsters, I'll work with you on, but that's going to be a little bit different. We're asking to move those to Sixth Street this year instead of Bannock. Um, Ed, I don't think I really reached out to you yet. Um, we should have our primary, uh, one of our primary vendors provide uh, disposable trash boxes as well. Um, so I don't think I'll need the Republic service side, but we'll definitely need the, um, the recycling side. So as we get a little closer, I'll reach out to you. But um, for everybody who doesn't know, Ed, Ed is a superstar. And last year he was out drenched like a wet cat um putting up stuff so i made sure to reach out to your supervisor and i gave you the hats off for the service that you do um i think we'll also want to take advantage of utilizing you for training on site that we talked about uh, we have a student group that comes through and helps maintain the um uh, trash and recycling services we also plan to have them follow the parade route as well this year um, we like to partner with different student groups and give them a chance to earn some money for extracurricular activities. So rather than contracting out, we decide to go that route so we can give back to the community. Uh, food services, pretty self-explanatory. They'll all pull their own permits as needed, fire permits included. Next up will be the parade route. Um, that's the standard route that we followed from last year. Debbie and I will work on that and John as well, a little bit in depth, a little further, but um, no real changes requested from there. And then just last slide is my email and phone number. Um, again, I'm pretty responsive as I try to be. Um, when I get questions from everybody, I pretty much know everybody. So I watch my mailbox. Um, insurance, I know that's coming very shortly. Our carrier is making just a couple of changes for the requested items that you wanted. So should have our certificates here, hopefully by the end of this week or mid next week. And that is the end of my presentation. Thanks so much, Joseph. You always do such a great job on these presentations. It makes that makes our work easier. Um, we will start with John. Whoa. Um, good briefing, Joseph. You you always have a, a great event. Um, I think we're probably going to want you to consider removing parking on the east side of Sixth Street from Jefferson to Bannock because 
we've narrowed everything down and the only lane open there is a number three lane southbound on 6th Street. And what we don't want to do is we don't want to have a vehicle with nowhere to go and somebody popping out from a car. Yes, that's already accounted for with uh, parking services. So that's already included in the order. We did that last year, but it didn't yep. show on the plan. So I just wanted to remind you. Yes, thank you. Yep. Um, Vince has already got that in his map. We'll, we'll want to see the traffic control plan with those pedestrian uh, closures. And when we do the walkthrough, mm -hmm. we would really appreciate you having your traffic control person at that so that as we make changes, we can get those changes implemented. All right, noted. Thank you, John. Hey, Joe, good to see you back. Um, yeah, just a quick um, question for like alcohol being served. Is that like pans and like draft stuff with cups or do you know? Uh, yes, um, the, we are going to be changing over at some point to single server serving uh, aluminum bottles. Um, that's not this year. However, though, our vendor has upgraded um, their uh, plastic type wear that they've done. Uh, so it's more eco friendly. Um, we're looking at single serve style this year as well again, uh, but that's more towards the compostable side. We're aware of what our goals are as a community and we continue to strive for those. Um, so we are making some changes this year to the type of materials and we inspect, expect less impact into the final uh, waste products for what's generated out of the event. Okay, you know, great. I'm, I'm glad you're making progress and yeah, we can chat offline, but I think keep in mind maybe on the years going forward, I mean, bringing a reusable cup and having them just serve into that. I don't know if that's possible, but that's like, preferred and in a waste management you know low waste kind of world but i um, i make a slight face of that and i get what you're saying i just my comfort level at this mm -hmm. point is probably not quite there yet because of what's happening like in the greater community still with transmission risk so high mm -hmm. um again that's kind of why i when talking to the vendors when we do that you know, we continue to push for those kind of materials to integrate for ways to impact that. And I, I do recognize our community goals and I agree with you 100%. I just wish those numbers were a little bit lower at this point uh, for our event for community transmission. So that's why we haven't fully transitioned to that part yet. No, and I, I absolutely like community safety is number one. So don't, don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna push this, but yeah, yeah if we get to a safe place eventually, love to just see that somehow incorporated but what you're doing is great so don't get me wrong like, oh i want a cool cup as much as i i know else, I but. You <laughs> but no i've got everything i need and we'll just chat offline and yeah we'll get you what you need so okay thanks. great thanks, joe thank you joseph good to see you again um last year on republic's end we had some container issues and I don't expect that to happen again, um, but last year we came and emptied the trash on Saturday. Assuming everything goes according to plan and you get the 240s, do you think you need that Saturday dump or are you good till Monday? I would like to look at a Saturday uh, service just on the trash side only with whatever's in the container. Again, I don't want to get to the end of the event and have any kind of like overflowing onto the street from Monday morning. Uh, again, we're getting that street service done and our goal really is to look like we're almost never there. So Saturday would be appreciated. Okay. A, a run for at least the trash side. I think we're pretty good about mitigating the um, recycling stuff because we have a little bit of a larger storage area kind of out of sight, out of mind for folks while we break down boxes and then we can get those cared for okay, and recycle appropriately. Uh, yeah, I completely agree. So let's plan on that. Okay. Um, but yeah, recycle center is not open, so we, we can't do anything about that till Monday, but, right. but we can get the trash emptied. Okay. So that, <clears throat> that's a good plan. Perfect. Uh, and then I think once we do the drop on the street, I guess they'll know how to drop that. So they can just get in, in and out easier. Our plan is to keep them kind of up at the intersection of 6th and Bannock, uh, kind of towards the top. But if there's a better spot, we're certainly open to that. We would want to make sure that we're uh, whatever's easier for your crews to get in and out. 
Okay. Yeah. You mentioned that uh, you're looking at a new location to put those. So when you find something you're comfortable with, let me know. Um, it's going to be on the east side of okay. six uh, next to lane one or three. Would you say three or one? So I'll need a new map. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I know. I owe you guys a layout. Yeah. So I'll, I'll look for that new map. And then also you'll want to make sure the meters are hooded and the ACHD permit is issued. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Joseph, thanks for taking all my phone calls. <laughs> totally appreciate that. But we're set for you on parking. We have our map and we're ready to go. And if anything comes up, get a hold of me and we'll continue there. Thank you so much. Just a quick question uh, to determine when uh, a close in Bannock. Is it the Friday or the Saturday morning? Uh, Bannock is going to be closed on Friday. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, as a note for VRT, um, we tried to reach out a couple of different times, but we didn't get any responses back. Um, we're looking to engage uh, with VRT and look at getting some different transit options in here. We sit next to CCP and we'd really like to utilize that from the mall at some point. Um, so we'll continue to work with VRT and hopefully get a little bit better integration into that plan. We'd like to alleviate some traffic into the core as much as possible. Yeah, please. Thank you. You've already answered my questions. Thanks. Hey, Joseph. Nice to meet you. A um, couple things. Um, so community notification form, we'll get that all sorted out offline. Um, yeah, Park Lane is going to be an issue always. Uh, they just have a lot of residents in that building. Um, the other thing is, uh, we did have our downtown maintenance team come back with a couple of comments from last year's event. It wasn't significant enough for us to bring it to the group or anything, but just trash and um, some sidewalk drippage and just wasn't as clean or as, as nice as they would have preferred. Again, it wasn't to the levels that we needed to escalate or anything. I just want to let you know now. So this year as the event's ending, you can kind of start mitigating a lot of that. Um, did you have a specific area identified that way we could probably hone in on that a little bit? Better? Yeah, so it was um, main okay. sidewalk on Bannock uh -huh. uh, in the in uh, Andrus Park there. So oh, okay, that strip, and then on the Y over by um, same side, basically Bannock, and then coming up Capitol on the right hand Y strip there. So kind of your main event border um it's mostly sidewalk and then there's a fair amount of um of trash in, in the gutters and a couple things like that so mm -hmm. nothing again to the point that escalate and i think they were able to get mostly everything cleaned up in a matter of an hour or so okay. um but just it was a note that came up on my research doing you know everything back end wise for this and want to let you know so we don't have that problem again this year no thank you um that's i appreciate bringing that to my attention that uh, makes me a little sad to hear and we'll uh work to remedy that awesome appreciate it uh -huh. joseph between yesterday and our conversation this morning i don't have a whole lot to say uh the only only one thing i want to ask is is pro pyro still doing your fireworks for you this year okay um i i haven't seen the permit come across yet so if they could get that in uh the sooner the better because we want to this year we're going to share our information with the state just to keep them up to date on what's going on all right um i'll make it clear to him that he needs to have that cared for by tuesday or wednesday okay no Perfect. exceptions that works thank you good morning joseph um i sent you that medical form that we talked about yesterday in your email this morning so other than that um we're good for medical just let me know if there's anything i can do for you Hi, Joseph. Uh, nothing from today, from yesterday. We'll follow up with you here shortly about any additional plans. Okay. So I was told that I'm sitting in Rachel's seat and I have large shoes to fill. So I'm here to tell you thank you for all the work you've done <laughs> and being a great partner with all of us. Is that good enough? Very good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> From the state side, uh, yesterday's walkthrough with the director was uh, very beneficial, and I don't think we have anything else to add. So, thank you. Thanks, Joseph, for all your diligent planning. Um, 
uh, summer couldn't make the meeting today as well as the health department. Um, but just make sure, obviously, I know you're in touch with summer because of the park reservations, but um, make sure you do get uh, the notification of event form to the health department and then your vendor list to them and myself when you get it together. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Yes, uh, there are a couple of questions that I was hoping summer was here today, but we'll we'll try to touch base offline on that. Huh? No, summer. For Parks and Rec, yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much, Joseph. I know we're all looking forward to the event very much. I thank you. I appreciate everybody's time this morning. And as I said, uh, my contact information is on the last slide. If anything else comes up from after today's presentation, please um, reach out. I try to re respond as fast as I can. Um, and I know you guys are all really busy. So again, thank you for your time this morning. Appreciate it. Okay. And FYI, we're planning our, our Pride Festival kickoff at first Thursday. I just found out this morning. So all kinds all right. of exciting things happening. Yeah, I'm, uh, I heard, um, so I'm like, again, yeah, I don't want to give away all the surprises, but I heard you guys are going to be doing some fun stuff this year. So Sounds like it. Yeah, thank you. All right, next up, um, Hyde Park Street Fair. Fun, fun event that's been around for a while and is... Welcome. I'm not on. Oh, I'm pretty loud anyway. Uh, not much has changed with the fair. We have made uh, a couple of changes. Do I need to push a button to get the uh, thing up or something? We've got a map. Okay. Uh, we haven't changed much about the fair, at least on the outside. The security perimeter remains the same as it has uh, for the past at least six or seven years with the fencing around the outside of the park, allowing us to keep uh, beer access throughout the park. And uh, we have MAV event security operating that once again this year, and they'll be manning all the entrances and exits, keeping outside beer out, inside beer in, and hopefully keeping everybody doing what they're supposed to do when they come into the park. We have changed the interior of the park, and we did this because we were finding it very inefficient and very, well, not always a good layout. We wanted to make sure that all our aisles stayed 20 feet wide. We also wanted to make sure that our access points were all clear. So, and we also were able to add extra vendors as well because we are not gonna be having the uh, Giraffe Laugh Kids area this year. They have decided that they don't have the women power to operate it. It's very, it's lab very labor intensive. And we felt with the, uh, with the uh, uh, growth of the playground area, which is roughly like twice the size that it was, that uh, there was no reason to try to bring somebody in this year, although we may look for a nonprofit to operate a small children's area next year. We're going to keep our uh, emergency services tent in that area where it has been for the past few years. It hasn't changed its location. It's in proximity to the playground, and it's easy access uh, for our operators to get around the park and also to get to the food court uh, if there's any problems there. We're once again having a uh, vendor shuttle operating uh, at the fair, keeping uh, the streets as clear as we possibly can of uh, our vendors parking there, especially if they have a trailer. Uh, we don't want to find any of those on the streets. We have found that since we started operating the shuttle that we've had uh, uh, fewer complaints from the neighbors. There's always a few because some people just don't like the fair, but there's always a few because of vendors parking where they shouldn't. This year and in previous years, uh, the number of complaints have dropped dramatically and we feel this has been a really good step for us. We have the use of the HealthWise parking lot for two days and then the Collective Church parking lot for two days and that will be on uh, the Thursday through Sunday of the event. Uh, we were going to have a security meeting pri uh, after this, so I, there's not really much in that area that I can really cover. Uh, we have made some other change to the fair that we did in 2021 uh, for the canceled fair that we've increased the number of uh, restroom units and we have uh, just about doubled the number of wash stations. We're going to keep that. The restroom units was a necessary change and we think the wash stations are a really necessary change too. So those are going to be permanent changes for the fair. 
I don't think there's much else I can cover with you on this unless you have questions. Thank you. We will um, go around the room. John. Another really, really great event. And you do a, a fantastic job with Thank it, you, Carl. John. A little more gray in the beard, though. <laughs> <laughs> if I keep doing this, <laughs> um, you white. We'll just need the traffic control plan and uh, we'll review it. Debbie will review it for us. Um, I think the biggest problem that we have with the event, and it's not the event itself, it's just that there are people that think they're entitled to parking in front of their homes. And so they put, they put out cones and uh, we'll, we'll continue to tell them that they can't do that and gather them up and if need be, we'll, we'll ask for support from our brothers in blue. But other than that, I mean, this is a, a very, very well run event and we don't, we don't get a lot of, a lot of kickback from this one. Debbie? Um, I have got the traffic control plan. I did send it back to you. I need a couple of revisions made on the signage and stuff. Okay. Here, just some additional signs that were missing. Other than that, um, that's the only thing I think I'm waiting on. Great. Hey, Carl. How's it going? Hey, how's it going, Ed? Good. Um, just a couple of things. It looks like uh, you're eliminating styrofoam from the event. Is that what I saw no. on your application? Eliminating styrofoam? Uh, yeah, we, we put that in uh, several years ago. Several years. Okay. Okay. Cool. I just, like, I just saw that. Um, and then also, just like I told Pride, I mean, you know, I love that you're using aluminum cans instead of plastic cups. Like that's a huge step already. I would just encourage the years to, to come to speak to your vendor about the possibility of. We have, uh, we are moving all our alcohol to most of our alcohol is being moved to cans and what cups we're using are compostable. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we're trying to stay ahead of the game on that. And we're trying to find a nonprofit group to collect the cans so we don't have to fill up the uh, recycling bin with those because that will be a, a major thing. So we're trying to find somebody that wants to, uh, you know, collect cans for money. So I love we're it. Hoping yeah. that, we're hoping somebody will step up and decide they want them, but you never know. I hope so. Yeah, that would be great. That's a great idea. Um, so, yeah, I think you're doing fine. And also, uh, looks like you're going to order a glass cart. Is that? I've got one. Yeah. Like on your application, it's showing um, – like a three yard glass boy i don't that's think we true. need a three yard glass okay that's fine we can work i think i took everything from last year which was probably taken from 2019 when we were working with zero waste mm -hmm. and we had so i think that was the, the error on my part i should have excluded that okay no worries we we'll, need to need the roll off some regular trash in for recycling okay okay well great yeah we will work with you and thanks for being flexible like we're going to change the lo logistically how we're Getting bins. Yeah, as long as we're able to collect them and bring them back to City Hall, it's a lot. It's a lot for us. It's a lot logistically. It's a lot quicker to get between yeah. there and and the park. That should be and fine. We have we have no problem with collecting the uh, boxes at from Art in the Park as we mm. did from uh, as we did every year for the past two or three years. As long as somebody doesn't decide to put them next to the sprinklers again. No, well, you can only um, hope that that doesn't happen. <laughs> so I, I'm just <laughs> I have this queen if it rains. Okay, so okay. I, okay. No, thanks, Carl. I've got everything. We'll just work offline on a few things. But yeah. great, thank, thank you. you. Carl, good to see you again. Yeah, I, I believe that they're fully aware of taking those boxes and keep them away from water and sprinklers and putting them in the, uh, I don't know what they call it, the yard there. Yeah, Ted's the yard. Gates. Yeah, so I, I'd expect that's where you'd find them. Yeah. And then, uh, so I see here you worked out 80, well, two 40-yard trash roll-offs and you expect 80 yards of trash that sounds pretty tight <laughs> that that sounds that sounds about right okay are you, would you benefit from having a one of those dumped on a saturday we we might i mean we don't know how many people are actually going to show up this year we expect to have a larger crowd so it might be great if we did have that that on a saturday as well um you know it really depends on the weather you know how many yeah. people come out uh, we haven't had a problem with overflow before but okay. if those seem really tight, then we may need, that might be something we should add. Okay. It might be something we discuss in the next few weeks. Okay. Um, but yeah, if, if you haven't experienced overflow in the past, then I'm not too worried about it. But if you're getting up there pretty close uh, come Monday morning, 
yeah uh, maybe maybe you don't want that to dump on saturday so uh no we'll leave that one open for now okay uh the map can i get a map for just dumpsters uh there's a lot going on here with the parks moving we need to relocate the permanent park dumpsters this is seth brown our operations manager and oh, he's one that redes morning. he redesigned the park and he will draw you a map beautiful he knows how to make that stuff happen okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you yeah because there's a, there's a chain there where i hear it here i say it and then when the day I up think comes we do this everybody's every year. like ah it's, it's just we do it just about every year yeah and sometimes we even get it right yeah yeah and it's been a couple of years so we have different True. people on our staff who would be clueless yeah so i'd appreciate that and then the plan for returning the cardboard boxes we'll bring them up to you thank you on monday morning perfect you could even take till tuesday if you need <laughs> Thank you, Carl. Thank you. Just one quick note about the additional, could we make that call on Friday if the Saturday dump is needed? Uh, I would say if you could, please let me know seven to 10 days in advance. Right. Yeah. We, we'll know, we'll probably, we'll know the weather reports. You so can we'll always. That, that area covered. So yeah, we probably, I, I think if we're going to have the increased crowds that we expect, uh, at least, you know, daily attendance, probably. I think it might be a good idea to do that. It's probably best to schedule it, and you can always cancel. Yeah. That's easier. That would be better. We'll, we can talk about that as we get closer. Okay. Great. Thank you, Conrad. Thank you. Carl, it was good talking to you yesterday. Nice talking to you, too. You bet. Um, so we're set in parking. We're, we're clear to go. Great. Thank you. Carl, nice to meet you. Um, I don't have anything for you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have any questions either. Thank you. Same here. Nothing. Thanks. Good morning, Carl. Good morning. Um, I see that you already applied for your special events permit for the fire department, so that's good. Um, the uh, how many food truck vendors? We've got uh, thirteen food trucks. We had fourteen in two thousand nineteen. We took one out to increase the space on the fair side of the food court because it wasn't wide enough okay and so it'll be a lot wider in other words you'll have that full aisle from the parking lot directly into the fair by okay. the food court just make sure we try to try to shoot for about 10 feet of distance in between those food trucks we all have we all have they're all huge trucks that operate on other sides and then we have a lot of spacing between them okay so, perfect yeah we and keep then, them we have to keep them pretty wide because it's such a small court right and then the other thing is um it's been a while since you had your event. So um, we're requiring fire department inspections for every food truck. They should all know this. Okay. But occasionally some show up at these events and we have to shut them down. We did have a grace period, but it is over. If they don't show up with this sticker or a sticker that looks like this on their trailer, they will be turned away. So just confirm that they've ha had their inspection. Don't just send out a notice. Confirm it. Great. That way we have don't have any problems. I will and follow up on that. Is... Uh, Rob Baker with Committed Events setting up your stage? Yes. Okay, so I've already been in communication with him. I don't know if he's relayed this to you, but we don't have a problem with his stage, but it's a pretty substantial structure that he puts over that stage. And so what we're requiring is a one-time uh, inspection from a structural engineer okay. to get some paperwork on it just for liability issues. We've allowed it in the past, but we're trying to get more, to, more in compliance with the, what the fire code actually says. Okay. So if he, he knows that, so just make sure to follow through with that. Okay. So... That's it. That's all I have. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I see that the medical plan is in here. Um, I just had a couple questions regarding how it's going to be staffed, but I'll give Casey a call regarding okay. that. It's uh, Boise. Uh, Local 149. I saw yeah. that. Yeah. Hi. Uh, we already communicated offline about the hill being your perimeter out there. So uh, we're, we're good on my side. Great. Uh, thank you for getting your notification of event form to the health department and um, your vendor list is amazing. So you <laughs> included everything. You're like model citizen and I'm probably going to use it for other vendors because there's usually one or two things that they forget for everyone. So I really appreciate that. It's very helpful and I'll make sure the health department does have that as well. And then obviously Summer will follow up if she needs it, anything. It actually helps us. us more than it helps you. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have a canceled vendor because he didn't put his stuff together, you know. Yeah. So before the concept. fair starts. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. 
Up next, Beth, do we have you for the um, Old Boise Oktoberfest? Perfect. Come on up. Yeah, quick reminder is that it needs to be green. Green? There you go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Chad Johnson. I own the Reef, the Brickyard, and the Front Door Tap House. A couple other ones uh, outside of downtown Boise. And I'm with Beth Peace, and we're here to tell you about Oktoberfest, which we've had 11 years of experience with it. It is September 24th. I think we have a site map that we're going to put on. Uh, there it is. Okay. <clears throat> we don't have a colorful presentation, but we can give you the details. So it is from 2 to 10 p.m. It is uh, on 6th Street between Main and Front Street. So two linear blocks. Uh, we have food, authentic uh, German food, uh, beer, games, and music. And... Uh, um, we do, uh, I think we've submitted the packet through each of the departments for review. Um, I don't know that there's a lot more I can tell you about the event, um, but if you'd like to ask any questions, please do so. Absolutely. And that's totally all right. This is brevity. <laughs> Um, we've got the uh, another good event. We've got the traffic control plan, uh, but we don't have the revisions for it. Uh, it was revisions. Yeah, I said it to you. I can send it again. Would you please? Mm -hmm. um, where, where does it come from? I kind of Debbie hacked, White, ACHD. I got hacked uh, three weeks ago, and some of the stuff is not. I, I'm not getting. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll get it. To you. I think the biggest concern that we have with this event, and it's not the event itself. It's just. We've got a lot going on in downtown Boise that weekend with uh, Fit One. So um, most of Fit One will be done about the time they're starting to set up and do their stuff, but it's going to be congested in the downtown core. So just something to be aware of. Hey, Beth. Hey, guys. Um just a quick question to clarify. So zero recycling bins then? Correct. You're, okay. So do you have... Compostable cups. And we, we do have glass mugs that we've done every year. Mm -hmm. We would love to go away from them. Mm -hmm. Right now we're sitting on some that we piled up a couple of years in a row that uh, eventually we'd like to go to the tree fort model, some kind of an aluminum reusable cup. Mm -hmm. That is the goal. Okay. Okay. Um so uh, do you foresee, I mean, generating any kind of paper or anything that the attendees would want to get rid of that wouldn't be trash? No. Okay. It's food waste. Yeah, it's all food waste. Yeah. Well, that's normally, yeah, trash. So, okay. Um, well, yeah, we'll get you set up with what you need. And um, I don't have anything else. So thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm sorry if I didn't catch this. The 20 cardboard boxes, you have those or are you getting them from Ed? I'm getting them. From okay, perfect. Um, on the application, I see that uh, there's a request for two three yard dumpsters. Are those ones you want us to bring in or are they currently on site? No, we won't. We're going to bring extra in. We have two compactors, two balers yeah. to handle all the cardboard that's going to be coming from the mugs and whatnot. From the mugs and whatnot. And so, um, I'm thinking we might, I think one will be plenty with what we already have set, but we want an overflow just in case. And we're going to have that set where the porta potties are, where the stage is, and over to the far that way, right? Yeah. And where the porta potties are, there'll also be a three yard dumpster right there. Okay. And there's space for another one in there? We have the, we have the use of the whole parking lot. Okay. That, okay. The, the porta potties will be actually face back this way that they're facing the, the the event that way they're not going to be this way they're going to be this way okay 
podcast. Yeah, really, my only question was if you're bringing in extra dumpster. I, I tried to see if that was on order yet, but it didn't look like it had. No. Okay. And um, because I was really thinking, I went back and looked in the alley, and now we have the apartment complexes that are sharing the trash. So I'm also going to give um, you information to have pickups done through the, both alleys that Saturday okay. morning to make sure everything is clean, everything's clear but they're all three yard compactors and then the balers is well, the balers we handle, but um, we make the bales and have them done out, but we'll have the compactors dumped. And then with the cups that we have there, they take up so much space. That's why we want to make sure we have that extra three yard. I think that's smart. So thank you very much. And sorry about your email. I got one of those from you oh, and I was like, yeah, I'm not going to open horrible. this. It was horrible. Yeah. So thank you. Hey, Beth. Uh, hi. We, hi. Uh, we are set in parking. We have everything that we need from you and you've reserved the locations that you need. So we're good to go. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Beth. Just uh, curious. Are you closing six on Saturday morning? Yes. Okay, cool. Not Friday night. Nine o'clock. No. Perfect. No. I thank think you. it's fit one done by nine, right? Not quite. So we want to move it to 10? Well, you guys are finished with that area, though. They are, because they come yeah. through that area first. Right. Yeah. Yes. So, and then they go to the park from there, and it's a big run. Yes. But yeah. You should be okay. Okay. Thank you. See you there. No questions from me. Hey, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, we will work offline on community notification yes. stuff. I mean, half the businesses are sitting right next to you. So. Yes. <laughs> um, Chad, we're having an event. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and so we'll get all that sorted. Um, other than that, if you guys need anything from me, let me know and we can get it sorted out. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Beth. Good morning. Thanks for presenting. Um, I, I like the design. I like the openness of it. Uh, the barriers will obviously be easily removable. Uh, you know, the closure on Grove Street. Um, Fit One is happening. That's the other event that you have listed there. So my only concern would be I'm not I'm not real sure what they have for their setup there. But um, I noticed you have a, the stage there, and then the is that a toilet? The ones on this side. Yeah, they're the, they're the porta potties. There's, we're taking that parking lot that CCDC owns on the corner. Okay. Actually, I think I'm th speaking of the sound booth. Oh, the sound booth. Yeah. yeah. It's so, across, it's across the street. So it's not in the entry. Right. To go. Off so the road. I, I'm good with this layout, but just whatever fit one has going on over here. And I'm not sure I can't remember. Um, I just don't want their event to be blocking that, that, that acts that in other words, what you have there could, could narrow what they have. I just want to make sure you guys are both Where's, leaving, the, leaving Grove street open for emergency access between the two. It, events. One is having an event on. Grove Street? I'm confused. Hi. <laughs> Maybe I can clarify. Fit One is going to be going eastbound on Idaho Street. So they are on the other, oh, they're on the north side of Main Street. The, so, okay. Okay. So they really shouldn't uh, overflow to each other. Okay. Okay. Well, then never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm um, confused. I just I saw that said other event right there. So I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, oh no. Else? That other event is on the Bass Block. Okay. It's 10 vendors. They're doing some kind of wool thing. Okay. And so they know we're there. We've already talked. And so, you know, they're going to move down a little further just to keep for okay. noise wise because of the, the band being the stage where it is. As long as you're communicating that. Yes, that's we are. No worries. Yes, no we worries. are. Um, and then you're going to need a tent permit for the, for the tent I've there. It's done and filed. Okay. I, I haven't seen that come across it. I'll search again, but um, I haven't seen that one yet. Uh, but everything else looks good. Um, you going to have any food trucks? I've already paid the fees as well. Did you? Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll double check on that. Okay. Any food trucks, food vendors? No, no, no outside. The restaurants, uh, Chad's restaurants will be serving the food. Okay. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Um, do you guys normally have like a first aid booth or no. anything like that set up? No. Okay. We do have first aid kits. We keep, yeah, kits. but I don't think we've ever opened them. Okay. Do you have um like... Do people know where they're located or how do you communicate that with the people that are uh, there's the security event? all around they can add there's 15 security walking there's probably 20 people uh with their charities and whatnot they can ask anyone i can put up a sign if you prefer yeah if you would just have something marked so that people know where it's located that would be great got it thank you hi beth uh, hi. thanks for the email communication i think that last one answered all my questions about the containment, the security plan. So I'm good to go. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. 
Um, make sure you get your notification of event form to the health department. I did. Okay. I'll do it again. Oh, if no. Um, yeah, I've, I've said it already. already. Okay. And the restaurants will be putting in their own permits. Yes. For serving the food. Okay. And Chad, are you cooking elsewhere and then we're cooking on site? <laughs> yes, we are. Actually, um, Jason Kovac is also a part of this, um, who is not here today. Um, he will be bringing um, uh, food from his restaurant, and then we will be serving out of the back of Reef. So that's where we'll prepare it, hold it, and then bring it okay. down to, yeah. Right. What's that? We're going to have grills. We'll be yeah, we'll grills. have a, for bratwurst, okay. we will have a griller on site. Okay. But, but Drew, my executive chef, does a good job working with the health department to make sure that we're in compliance, and then they come and do the inspection. So Okay. We do Perfect. a lot of events that way. So yes. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. Um, just make sure that you or them get the eating and drinking mobile for anything that you're going to be yeah, grilling on site. And then um, I think that was it. If you do need anything else, let me know um, with either of you. So glad to have you guys back again this year. Perfect. Thank Thanks. you. I'm going to send you an email so that you can make sure that it gets through to you. And so you can send it back to me for, just for that, that way. Yeah. Just a No, it's all, everything's been done by me. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Awesome, thanks you guys. Thank, thank you. you. All right, we have just um, a couple of pending approvals. Um, some for Boise Soul Food Festival. Ed, have you signed off on that? Yes, I uh, signed off this morning. I was waiting for a response. And I noted that. In okay, the, you did. Uh, good. Thing. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Kelly, are you still waiting on Parks and CDH for that? Um, I did message Summer this morning, and she said that it was good enough for a sign off. Um, and I'll confirm with the health department. Okay, thank you. Um, and then the Albertsons Open ACHD. We're going to sign off on that one today. Okay. Um, we're going to require a little bit more robust traffic control plan next year. Um, we're just trying to tighten things up and make sure we're compliant and equitable across the board with everyone. Um, they are gonna have about 225 of the no parking pylons. They will not be able to change those to no parking at any time. There'll be no parking 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Sorry, Matt. Um, and then I think OEP. Um, that's Rachel. She's doing a walkthrough on Saturday morning Great. for okay. it, but no issues that I know of. Cool. Um, and it looks like any specific after actions do? Um, none specific. I appreciate everybody that has submitted just photos, um, copies of um, cleanup forms that their crews have done, you know, anything that just needs to be noted and gathered is very helpful. Um, Rachel has done a couple of the last ones through her crew um, because of the safety and security aspect. So in conjunction with her, I think we're good. Great. Um, all right, nice to have you in the room, Ed. Great to have everyone here and uh, welcome to the meeting, Taylor. All right, I think we are done. See everyone in a couple weeks.